All right. <clears throat> so today we're going to be going over 2.1 and 2.2. Uh, these are mostly all about uh, solving equations and the tools that we use to solve those equations. Um, so, in this 2.1, we're going to learn what a solution is and what it means to solve an equation. Um, and then we're going to review two tools to solve equations. First one is the addition principle. The second one is the multiplication principle. Um, they're probably, at least in this class, they'll be the most commonly used tools to solve equations. All right. <clears throat> So, what's an equation and what's a solution to an equation? Well, we already know what an equation is. We went over that in a previous chapter. Um, but for a solution, uh, a solution is, uh, sorry, any replacement for a variable that makes an equation true is called a solution of the equation. To solve an equation means to find all of its solutions. Right? And so remember we had that problem on the homework a little while back that asked for integer solutions and there were four different solutions. Each of those was a solution, but to completely solve the problem you had to list all four solutions, okay? So just because you find one solution doesn't necessarily mean the problem is solved. It just depends on the problem type. <clears throat> all right, so to determine whether something is a solution to an equation, um, at this level, we kind of throw it into a table, right? And so for this next example, we want to determine if 7 is a solution of x plus 6 equals 13. Some of you guys might be able to see that already. So how we do this here is we make a little table and we separate our equal sign by the line, the vertical line in the middle. Um, and then we just write out what's on each side of the equal sign, right? And then we go down to the next layer in the table and we replace our x with 7, just like it wants us to do, right? And so 7 plus 6 is supposed to equal 13. And then we go ahead and do our addition and we find out that 7 plus 6 is in fact equal to 13. And we get to the line that we say, that we say like 13 is equal to 13. Obviously that's true. The whole equation's true. Right? And so all we did was we lined up both sides of the equation. You know, on the second line, we subbed in any values we were given for the equation. Then on the third line, we did our calculation and we checked to see if it was correct or not. That's it. If we want to do the same problem with something that's incorrect, let's say, right? So what if we did this um, for x equals 3, right? So we say, is that correct or not? Well, we line up our x plus 6 on the left and our 13 on the right. Now, it doesn't matter which side you put on the left or right. You know, it's equal sign, so it's, it doesn't really matter. Um, on our first line, we sub in the x equals 3. And so then we have 3 plus 6, right? The x goes to 3. And then we have 6 over on this side. Does 6 equal 13? Oh, uh... Oh, shoot, sorry. Thank you, Juan. <laughs> All right, very good, very good. That should be nine. Should be nine, right? This is wrong, and we're also being tricked. Yeah, that's the law of wrong numbers. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so as you can see, we get down to this line, and after I did the math right, uh, it's, it's false, right? So no, this is not a solution to this equation. All right, so let's go down to the next one. Let's try this again. So how about this? We want to determine if negative 1 is a solution to this ugly guy right here. All right. So we just line it up with this side on the left side of our table, 7x minus 2, and then this side on the right side of our table, 4x plus 5. OK, so our first line down is our substitute line, right? And so we substitute negative 1 in for x. 7 times negative 1 minus 2. And we do the same thing on this side. 4 times negative 1 plus 5. And then we go ahead and we do our math, right? Uh, negative 7 minus 2, that's negative 9. Um, negative 4 plus 5, what's that? That's one, dude, right? And this is not true. So this is not a solution. Nope. All right, so basically you just, 
you know, to find out whether something's a solution, you plug it in and see if it's true, <laughs> right? That's more or less what we're doing here. We're just doing it in kind of a formalized way. All right, so what does it mean to be an equivalent equation? Uh, equations with the same solution are called equivalent. And so there are a massive number of equivalent equations to like x equals seven. Matter of fact, there's an infinite number of equivalent equations. Not important for this class, but in this, right, this very first one, this is like the most basic, x equals seven, okay? That's equivalent to this guy too, right? Because if we plug seven in for x, seven minus two equals five, and this is a true equation. This one too, if we plugged seven in for x on x plus six, we would get 13, and once again, this would be a true equation. And so all three of these are equivalent because x equals seven is a solution in those. All right, so on to the addition principle. All right, so this is the first tool for solving equations. Well, I don't know about the first, but it's definitely one of the most important. <clears throat> so the addition principle says, for any real numbers a, b, and c, a equals b is equivalent to a plus c equals b plus c. And so basically this says you can add whatever you want to both sides of an equation, and it does not change the solution. Okay, and so, <clears throat> so for our x equals seven example from above, if we said x plus three equals seven plus three, that would not change the value of the equation, right? It maintains it. Um, the best way for me to think about this in physical terms is with like a balance scale, right? If you have a balance scale and you have the same amount of weight on each side and it's reading even, uh, you have to add the same amount of weight or subtract the same amount of weight to keep that equality, right? You can't uh, subtract one from the left side and expect it to stay even. That's not the way it works, right? And so your equals sign is like a balance beam, right? If you start doing stuff to one side of it, the whole thing falls out of balance and nothing works anymore, okay? And so when it comes to the equals sign, you can add or subtract anything from, either, uh, from both sides, shouldn't say either side, from both sides, and it will maintain. Um, so we use this. The way that we use this um, is that we use this to sort of isolate our x variable. A lot of times our x's will come like, you know, 3x plus 5 equals 10. Well, what we want to do is get down after enough steps to x equals some number or some stuff. Right? And so we do that using these tools to rewrite the equation over and over again until we get to this final step. So let's go over how we do this with the addition principle. So um, we see that we have x plus some stuff equals some stuff. We don't want that, right? All the way down here at the end, we want x equals some stuff, right? That's like our final, that's our final step. So we do that by adding or subtracting things from either side, right? And so how we isolate this x is we have to sort of take this 5 and move it over to the other side somehow. So we do that by subtracting 5 from both sides, right? So x plus 5 minus 5 is equal to negative 7 minus 5, right? And so I subtracted 5 from both sides. So, what's 5 minus 5? Zero. Zero. These cancel out, and we just get x equals this stuff. Negative, negative 7 minus 5, which equals negative 12. Right? And so that's it. Like, you know, we just use this little additive principle to sort of throw numbers over the other side, and that way we can isolate our variable to see exactly what it is, and we don't have to wade through a bunch of stuff. All right. So, <clears throat> this guy here. This example, negative 6.5 equals y minus 8.4. What can we do to both sides to isolate that variable? Add, Add 8.4, exactly, right? Negative 6.5 plus 8.4, and that is equal to y minus 8.4 plus 8.4. These guys cancel out, and then we just get y equals 8.4 minus 6.5, does anybody know what that is? I don't really want to do that. I'm just going to do it on my calculator. There it is. That's my lazy system one, tube. One, <laughs> one did it. One did it. Nice. I'm just going to say you're correct. 
1.9, and there we go. So as you can see, like really all you need to do is you need to identify the constant that's attached to the variable and add the opposite of that constant to both sides. That's really all we're doing here. All right. So how about the multiplication principle? So this is right along the same lines, right? Uh, in the last example, things were attached with addition, and so we used addition to get rid of them. Uh, in these examples, things will be attached with multiplication, and so we're going to use multiplication to get rid of them. So the multiplication principle says, for any real numbers, a, b, and c, with c not equal to 0, a equals b is equivalent to a times c equals b times c. So what this is basically saying is that you can multiply both sides of the equation by anything you want as long as it's the same thing and it maintains the equation. So if I wanted to, not like this would do me any good, but suppose I had 3x equals 10. If I wanted to, I could multiply both sides by 10 and this equation would be great. I, you know, I wouldn't solve anything using this method because it, it's useless, but you know, it's like, um, that's, the, that's the theory here. You can do that and it maintains the equality. So, uh, oh, one quick definition before we get into all this. Um, in a product like 3x, 3 is known as the coefficient. All right, and so we're gonna use that word coefficient a bit in the next few minutes. All right, and so, if I had something like 10x squared, 10 would be the coefficient, right? It's the constant number attached to the variable through multiplication. All right, <clears throat> so uh, the way that we use this is we take uh, variables that have coefficients, like this 3x down here, and we basically turn that coefficient into a 1. And so just like in the last example, by the time we get to the last step, it's going to say x equals some stuff, a number preferably. All right, so <clears throat> what we do here, uh, what can we multiply both sides of this equation by? 3x equals 5 to give us a 1 out, or, uh, to give us a 1 out in front of the x. One third. Exactly, the reciprocal of the coefficient, right? So one third times this side and one third times this side, right? The threes will cancel. And on our next line, we'll get x equals 5 times 1 third is 5 thirds. All right. So on this next example, right? So basically, what we do for all of these when we see them is we say, OK, this is attached through multiplication. I just need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the coefficient. What's the reciprocal of 1 third? 3 over 1, yeah, or 3. Okay, threes cancel, and we get x equals 5 times 3, which is equal to 15. Okay, how about this next one? And actually, for this next one, uh, why don't you guys do this on your own paper here? Take a couple minutes, do it on your own, see how it works out. All right, everybody at least dug into that one. Okay, so for this one, as you might have done on your own, right? If you uh, had a little bit of trouble with this, no big deal, we just learned it, right? Um, so with this one, I just noticed that 4 fifths is the reciprocal of 5 fourths, which is our coefficient, right? That means these guys turn into 1. Um, and then our next line, we say x is equal to 10 times 4 over 5. Well. 
that is like saying 10 over 1 times, uh, whoops, 4 over 5. We multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, and we get 40 over 5. 8, exactly. All right. So with this guy, what's the reciprocal of negative 4? Negative 1 fourth. Right? Don't forget the negative. That's important. All right. These guys will cancel and turn into 1. And then x is going to equal a negative 9 over 4. Um, and you guys, I don't know if you noticed me doing this, but uh, a lot of times I'll sort of, you know, if it's 9 times 1 fourth, I mean, it's pretty obvious this is just 9 over 4, right? You know, that's a little shortcut. You don't have to write it 9 over 1 and then draw the arrows. Like, you know, you can recognize that this is 9 over 1 and that nothing's going to happen to the denominator here. So you just multiply the... So you don't need to do an extra step. No, you don't really need to unless you really want to, uh, which is fine with me. You know, but like, yeah, x times um, 3 fourths, you know, this can be written as 3x over 4, right? Like the the constant just kind of multiplies into the numerator if it's a whole number. All right, let's move on. So how about this guy? How do we solve this guy? What do we multiply both sides by? Negative 1. There you go, right? All right, because negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. These guys cancel, and we get x equals negative 5. No problem. All right, so this guy here. Um, so just like I sort of outlined up here, right, this 2y over 9, this can also be written as 2 ninths y, if that makes more sense for your reciprocal. So what do I multiply both sides by? 9 over 2. 9 over 2, exactly. These guys will go away, and we will get y equals 8 thirds times 9 halves. Since it's multiplication, we just go straight across the top and straight across the bottom. And this is, what's 9 times 8? I don't know. Sure. 72. <laughs> Over 6. And yeah, sure, that simplifies, but um, I don't really feel like doing it. Was it 12? Thank you, Juan. Juan's my human calculator. <laughs> He's faster than my TI. <laughs> can't we just simplify the, if it's multiplication, can't we just simplify the factor down so they multiply straight across and make it simpler? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, like Juan said, um, I think you were doing this the other day too. Yeah, if you want to simplify the factors, like in this step, you totally can. Like if you want to notice that 9 goes into 3 or 8 goes into 2, that's, that's totally fine. <laughs> no need to like you know end up with these big guys in the end if you don't need to if you don't need them. All right, so now the question gets posed: Which tool do I use and when? Right? When do I use multiplication? When do I use addition? Um, so basically, um, what I like to do is sort of view these rules or these principles as undoing something every time that you're using one, right? And so when you use the addition principle, you're undoing this negative 8 here. You know, when you're using the multiplicative principle, you're, you, you're undoing this uh, 0.3 times t. Like it's, you know, you're kind of like reversing an operation almost. And so it's like, um, you use the operation when it's warranted, right? When you need to undo something. So in this first example, right, um, obviously we want to end up as x equals some stuff, uh, so we got to undo this negative 8. So if we add 8 to both sides, we do that, right? We get x equals 8 minus 3, which is 5. <clears throat> For this guy, right, our coefficient, or we have a coefficient that's attached with multiplication, so we use the multiplicative prox uh property to get rid of that, right? Um, so I'm just going to say 1 over 0 0.3 on both sides. 1 over 0 0.3. Right? So then we get t equals 18 over 0 0.3. And this is definitely a time for a calculator if I've ever seen one. 
Um, we could always convert that 0 0.3 into fraction form, but we don't mind calculators here, so. <laughs> 60. Yes, I am. You're allowed to use calculators on your tests. I'm not ever going to expect you to do long multiplication or long division unless it's of polynomials, which is totally different. Just want us to know the process on our test. Yeah, I don't care about yeah, everybody has a calculator on their phone. What do we care about long multiplication anymore, honestly? We don't. <laughs> I I don't. Sorry, I should say I don't. You guys might care a lot about it. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> Okay, right. Okay, so I already kind of went over this earlier. Um, you know, we I, I like to think of these principles as tools to undo operations, right? The operations sort of trap our variables like into a position where we can't see what they mean. And so we want to take those out of the trap, right? <clears throat> okay, so and usually in general, um, when you see like a mixed example, and so here we'll do a, a, a weird example. So suppose we have 3x plus 5 equals 10, right? We have this mixed example where we have, we have a coefficient on the x, but we also have something added to the x. We do addition first, right? It's, that's just kind of the general rule, right? We um, subtract 5 from both sides before we divide by 3. The reason for that is because if we divided everything by 3 right now, or if we multiplied everything by 1 third, We just have, we'd be like worse than we were before, right? Because now we still have x plus some stuff equals some stuff. We basically didn't do anything. So you do the addition first until you have the coefficient. Let's say it's a. a times x equals some number. Uh, and then you do the multiplication. Does that make sense? OK. As we do more examples, this will be a little more obvious. <clears throat> OK. So, what did we learn in this section? Well, uh, we learned what it means to be a solution to equation, right? Uh, we learned what it means to solve an equation. That means you got to find all solutions. Uh, re we reviewed the meaning of equivalent equations, meaning any equation with the same solution is equivalent. Uh, we learned two major tools for solving equations. We learn the addition principle. This is used when the variable is trapped or attached by addition or subtraction. The multiplication principle. This is what we used when something is trapped or attached by multiplication or division. All right. <clears throat> Let's go into the next section. So sometimes we have to use these guys together. Um, so we're going to continue talking about when to use the addition and multiplication principles and we're going to do a little bit of combining like terms before solving equations. All right. So applying both additive and multiplication principles. Um, so we sort of just went over this uh, just like what to do first, right? And so in this example, we don't want to divide by three first, right? Uh, we don't want to multiply by one third first, which is equivalent, right? Dividing by three is the exact same as multiplying by one third. All right, so first what we do is we get rid of this five here. So we're going to say um, negative five plus five plus three equals three x equals 17, oops, geez, <laughs> equals 17 minus 5. So we subtracted 5 from both sides. Right? That allows us to cancel these two 5's out. And that gives us 3x equals 17 minus 5, which is 12. Now, now that we don't have we don't have any uh, we don't have anything added to this 3x, there's nothing included with it. It's just attached. The 3 is only attached through multiplication, right? We want to get rid of that, in a, in a sense. We want to get to the line that says x equals some stuff. So we multiply both sides by 1 third. This guy cancels, and we get x equals 12 over 3, which is 4. And that's our final answer. All right. <clears throat> so we went over that. How about, how about you guys try this next one on your own?
4 thirds x minus 7 equals 1. Four thirds x minus seven equals one. All right, what do you guys think? What should we do first? Excellent, add seven to both sides. These guys will cancel and we'll get four thirds X equals eight. Now what? Three, three fourths, right? Yeah. And so the, if we would have multiplied by 3, then that would have given us 4x equals, what is it, 24 or something? Uh, but yeah, we want the, the reciprocal. And, and you know, if, if you choose the wrong reciprocal, it's going to become obvious real quick uh, because you're going to have a mess. You know, and you're going to be like, oh, that didn't do what I wanted it to do, which is a pretty good indicator that you got the wrong reciprocal. Okay, so cancel these guys, and we get x equals 8 times 3 over 4. Right, um, the eight and the four can cancel and give us two times that, right? And so that gives us six. Okay, <clears throat> how about this guy? All right, where should we start with this? 45 minus t equals 13. What's the first step? Subtract 45 from each side. So negative 45 plus Oops, 45 minus t equals 13 minus 45. The 45s cancel, and we just get negative t equals 13 minus 45. What is that? 32. Nice. Negative 32. All right, what now? Multiply both sides by negative 1. Uh, in, you know, in other words, just Cancel these guys out, right? <laughs> T equals 32. Nice. All right, and so you guys can see this is kind of the pattern here. You know, when we run into these problems where we have both a multiplica uh, multiplication and an addition, we typically do the addition first just because it's going to make things easier. And if you choose the wrong route, it simply doesn't do what you wanted it to do, you know. And so sometimes I see people like choosing the wrong route and then try and make it, you know, try and make it work for them. <laughs> like, you know, if it's not obvious that it worked, you probably chose the wrong route and it's okay to just go back and redo it. <clears throat> All right, this guy here. What do we do first with this one? Add. Is it add? Oh, no. Subtract. Subtract. Right? There you go. We got to do opposites, right? So negative 16.3 <laughs> plus 16.3 minus 7.2y equals negative 8.18 minus 16.3. I'm just going to do that right here. All right, so these guys cancel out and we get a negative 7.2y and that equals a negative 24.48. Okay, um, you know, these are both negative, so this is just something that I do. You guys can do it the other way if you want. You can multiply both sides by negative one, but it's, it's really obvious that you can just cancel these guys at this point. 
because it's like obviously you can multiply both sides by negative one, right? So they sort of just cancel if you want them to. Okay, so now that we got the negatives out of the way, we have 7.2y equals 24.48. Um, so we multiply both sides by 1 over 7.2. And we do that on our handy dandy calculator. 4.48 divided by 7.2, and we get 3.4. Yeah, it's better to write it. Oops, not x, y. All right. <clears throat> so that's our last example on that page. Combining like terms. <clears throat> All right. So one thing that's important to note is that before you use either of these principles, you're going to want to combine like terms on both sides before. of the equation. Yeah, before you use the addition or multiplication principles, you're going to want to combine like terms. If you don't do that, you're just working against yourself. Right, and so like this one, we got 3x plus 4x. If we try and use the multiplication principle on that, we got different numbers to deal with. You know, it's a mess, so we might as well just combine those, right? 3 plus 4, that's 7. Okay, and so then we just solve in the usual method, right? Divide both sides by 7. These 7's cancel. We get x equals negative 14 over 7, which is equal to negative 2. All right. <clears throat> So, um, just to make sure, does everybody see what I did there with the sevens? Right. And so what I did was multiply both sides by one over seven. That's the same as dividing both sides by seven. And so it's for me, it's quicker to just say over seven, over seven, you know, rather than multiply by one over seven. You guys can do it whichever way you prefer. I'll recognize it either way. Um, but you know, don't don't get. Hopefully, you don't get thrown for a loop when I do this in class. And if you do, please raise your hand because it's probably a mistake that I made. All right. <clears throat> so with this guy, so this is an interesting one. So we take a look at it, and there's no like terms to combine on either side. So we just start with our addition and our multiplication, right? So all we need to do is choose one side to isolate the variable on, and then we go about it in that way. Do you guys want to choose? The left side or the right side? Okay. Left side, that looks way easier, right? Okay, so we start that out by uh, subtracting five off each side, right? Minus five and minus five. These guys are gonna go away and we get negative x. That is equal to negative eight x, six minus five, that's plus one. Okay, so we chose the left side, which means we're going to keep on working on that. Uh, oh, actually, no, that's not going to work either, is it? Because now we have x's on both sides. All right, so now we're going to use the additive property to get our x's on one side. Just like we do with our constants, we do the same thing, right? We kind of want to, in parentheses, we want to, or in quotation marks, we want to throw this negative 8x over the other side. So. We're going to add the opposite of that to both sides. So we have 8x minus x equals a negative 8x plus 1 minus, oh, sorry, plus 8x, right? And that allows us to cancel these guys out on this side. And now, now we're in a better position, right? Combine like terms, 8x minus x equals 7x and that equals 1. All right, multiply both sides by 1 over 7 or divide both sides by 7. These guys cancel and we get x equals 1 seventh. All right, so that was a little bit of a weird one, right? We kind of, you know, it helps to choose one side and just sort of start making it so that's where your variable is going to be. Um, otherwise, you can kind of get a little bit confused in the process. So how about this next one? Which side do we want our variable to be on? Four. Yeah, let's choose the left side. Just because we already got two sets of x's on there already, we can combine them right off the bat. 
So these terms are like uh, 6 minus 7 is a negative 1. So on this side, we have 5 minus 1x. That is equal to 10 minus 4x plus 7. All right. You guys want to handle the constants or the variables first? Constants? All right, let's do that. So this is a 5. We want to, we want to add the opposite of that on both sides. So we have minus 5 plus 5 minus x, and that's equal to 10 minus 4x plus 7 minus 5. I, I could have combined these, like, these terms on the last uh, step, too. <laughs> All right, so the 5s go away. And then we have negative x is equal to uh, 10 plus 7 minus 5. That's 12 minus 4x. OK. Now, let's handle our variables. So the opposite of negative 4x is positive 4x. So I'm going to add that to both sides. These guys are going to cancel. And then we're going to have 4x minus x, which gives us 3x. And that is equal to 12. All right. Here we are. This is where things get easier, right? We just divide both sides by 3. These 3's cancel. And then we have 4. Exactly. x equals 4. All right. <clears throat> Let's keep digging into these guys. So suppose we have something like this. Well, by the rules of oper uh, sorry, the rules, yeah, the order of operations, almost forgot that one. Um, the order of operations say that we need to handle these guys first. So that's what we're going to do. Right. We can't combine any like terms on either side of the equation. We're sort of stuck with these uh, brackets, and so we're going we're gonna to get rid of those first by distributing. All right, so we have 2. This guy drops down. This negative 5 distributes into each term. So we have negative 5 times x, negative 5x, negative 5 times positive 5. What does that give us? Negative 25, exactly. All right, now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. 3 times x, well, that's 3x. 3 times negative 2, that is negative 6. And we still have our minus 1 hanging out there. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and collect our like terms. So we have uh, 2 minus 25, that is a negative 23. Negative 5x minus 23, that is equal to 3x minus 7. All right. So now that we figured that out, now we're in another one of these situations. Um, eh, let's pick the let's pick the right side this yeah. time, just just to get a little weird. <laughs> um, all right, so let's just handle our constant first. Um, so we are going to the opposite of negative seven is positive seven. So that's what we're going to add to both sides. These guys are going to go away, and we're going to have seven minus five x minus 23. That is going to equal 3x. All right. <clears throat> so now, combine like terms. 7 minus 23. Um, what is that? That's negative 16. Negative 5x, negative 16. And that equals 3x. OK. All right. <clears throat> so now, we're going to take this 5x and toss it over the other side, right? The opposite of 5x, sorry, the opposite of negative 5x is 5x. All right, so we're going to add that to both sides. These guys go away, and we get negative 16 is equal to 3x plus 5x, which is 8x, right? Okay, now we're attached through multiplication, so we use the multiplication principle. Divide both sides by 8, All right, and then we get negative 16 over 8, which is negative 2, equals x. OK. Does anybody have any questions about those? OK. They can be a little bit weird, you know. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes you end up, like, not knowing what to do next. Just, you know, take baby steps. They're not too, you know, they're not too crazy a problem. So if you end up, like, all messed up, then just start it over. That's probably the best way to go. OK. Boom. Clearing fractions. Um, so this, 
this is not something that, you know, like, you, you definitely wouldn't fail the class if you didn't know how to clear fractions in an equation, but man, it will save you so much time on exams. Um, last, last year, I put in a few questions on exams that were just like so ugly unless you just cleared the fractions real quick at the beginning and then it was like so easy. But if you forgot that step, it might have taken you an extra 20 minutes, you know, to solve the problem. So, you know, I'm not totally evil, but sometimes I'm evil. All right, so how do we clear fractions? Um, well, to do this, we multiply both sides, meaning each and every term, by a number that just clears the fractions, right? That cancels the ones, right? And so if we wanted to clear 2 over 3, if we wanted to clear that fraction, we could multiply it by 3, right? But if we multiply each and everything by 3, this fraction's still going to remain. Right? And so you need to multiply through by something that will clear everything, which means it contains the factors of all your denominators in it. Right? And so for this example, it's 6. Right? So we just say 6 times 2 over 3x minus 1 sixth equals 6 times 2x. Notice that I put parentheses around these. Right? When we do this multiplication by both sides, we have to multiply the entirety of both sides. And so you say 6, put the parentheses in there, and then distribute into what's, what's on that side. Right? And so we said 6 times this entire side. So we're going to multiply 6 into 2 thirds. Right? And that gives us um, 6 is 2 times 3. So that gives us 2 times 2 times 3 over 3. And then we distribute into the, yeah, then you just get 6 over 6, right? Okay, and that's equal to 12x. Okay, so on this guy, you can see that we have some like factors, so those guys cancel. And then we just go about our normal solution process, right? So then we have, this guy turns into a 4x minus 1 equals 12x. Sorry, I'm running out of room here, so this is going to get a little bit ugly. Um, <clears throat> so now, we want to isolate our x's. We should probably do it on this side, right, because we have constants and variables on the left side. So we're going to subtract 4x from both sides. <laughs> and then we get negative 1 equals 8x which tells us that x is equal to a negative 1 over 8. And that's true because we divided both sides by 8 here. All right, I'll try and, try and leave myself a little more room in the future. Sorry about that. <laughs> Yes, you mean instead of like breaking it down into fra into it's yeah exactly. I just did that to like um, yeah. I'm just trying to sort of I don't know go into as much explanation as possible. But yeah, absolutely. If you skip that step in your head, that's fine. Um, one thing to watch about skipping steps, like not necessarily this one because this one's a pretty cake one to skip. But sometimes when you skip steps, uh, that's where the problems happen, right? And that's. When we, uh, when we were in the longer, like, upper division math classes, when I was studying math, um, if you got something wrong and we couldn't figure out why, the first thing that we'd ask you is, where did you skip steps? Anywhere, even the smallest, you know? And almost without fail, that's where the mistake happened. And so if you're going to skip steps, totally do it, but be very careful. I I'm one of those per people that when I skip steps and I feel like everything's going fine, I start screwing stuff up. And so it's like, you know, just be aware of how you're doing math, right? All right. <clears throat> this next guy, this is a nice sort of ugly one. Why don't we take this one and do it on our own?
All right, so we'll go ahead and do it up here and you can follow along and see, uh, see how you did. So first things first, we want to get rid of our brackets. So we went ahead and distributed the two-fifths in. All right, that gives us three times two over five, which is six-fifths x plus two-fifths times two, which is four-fifths, and that's equal to eight. <clears throat> okay, so what should we multiply both sides by at this point? Yeah, five, right? We want to clear those fractions. We could probably do this without do it without clearing the fractions, but it's easier to just clear them, right? So this is an easy one, right? Since both the denominators are five, we just go through and cancel straight up. And we have six X plus four is equal to 40. And that made things a whole lot easier. All right, so now the opposite of four is negative four, so we're gonna subtract that from each side. 6x is equal to 40 minus 4, which is 36. All right, we divide both sides by 6. And we get 6. Everybody do okay on that one? And if not, you see... What, oh, yeah? It happens. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, let's do another one. Did we already do this one? I don't know. We'll do it again anyway. All right, so <clears throat> I feel like we did, but I don't know. They all start to blend together after a while. Um, all right, so we see that our variables over here, um, the opposite of 16.3 is negative 16.3. So we're going to subtract that from both sides. These guys are going to go away. And we're going to get negative 7.2y equals, I could swear we did this. <laughs> we did. All right, let's do a different one. Okay, so I have a couple examples from the book that we'll go over, and then we'll get out of class early. Okay, so how about this one here? Suppose I said solve for this, and I said 9x equals 0. What's x? What's it got to be? It's got to be 0, right? Yeah, you can't get 0 unless you multiply by 0. It's impossible, right? So x has to be 0. All right, how about this one here? You guys can do this one on your own. So, nine minus x equals two. Whoops. All right, a lot of stuff to take care of on that one, I know.
All right. Anybody get an answer? Any brave soul willing to put themselves out there? X equals zero. All right. Anybody else? You had zero too? All right. Interesting. Okay. Let's solve this guy then. Let's see what we get. All right. So first things first, we're going to start by getting rid of these parentheses. Right? And so this side stays the same. Distribute the 2 in, which gives us 10 and a negative 4x. Okay, next step is distribute the negative in to get rid of these parentheses. Right, so that's going to give us negative 1 plus 5. Then we, oh, thank you. Then we combine like terms. Nothing to combine on this side. On this side, we have 10 minus 1, which gives us 9. Negative 4x plus 5x, which gives us x. Okay. <clears throat> so now, <laughs> now if you guys see, we can subtract 9 from both sides, right? And those just go away, right? So then we have negative 3x, which is equal to plain old x. We're going to subtract x from both sides. And that's going to give us 0 over on that side and negative 4x over on this side, right? x has to be 0. There's no other answer. Nice job, sir. Nice job sticking your neck out there. All right. Um, I don't think there's too much else to go over. Uh, is there any questions about the sections today? Do you guys have any confusing parts? No? Everything's good? Um, we're going to have our the test coming up next week. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea to go over that. Um, right, so we have the test, not next week, um, but um, in just over, or just under two weeks from now is when we have the test, okay. right? And so it's on Tuesday the 19th. Um, on Thursday, we'll be doing a full review class where we go over all the problem types that we've done so far. Um, you know, we kind of just, yeah, we do an interesting little review thing. I haven't come up with review assignments yet, but that's something that, that I might do this semester. I'm not sure yet. Um, but yeah, that test is coming up. So, you know, don't slack on your homework. Don't slack on your studying because, you know, if you, if you slack now, you're going to have to make up for it before the test. Um, so, all right. Thanks for another great class, guys.